Yeah, we'll, 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 yeah, we'll, 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 we'll dote on that. We'll dote on that. All right, we're gonna film this sucker. Good morning, Minneapolis. Today is Wednesday, October 28th. In obvious news, water is wet, winter is cold, and you're about as qualified as Amy Coney Barrett to be a Supreme Court Justice. So, today we're filming this on Tuesday. You're seeing this on Wednesday, which means yesterday, Monday, Walter Wallace Jr. in Philadelphia, West Philadelphia, was shot and killed by Philadelphia police. Now, if you haven't seen the video, I'm going to explain some of the details, so I'm just gonna give you a quick you know, option to take 30 seconds to skip forward if you don't wanna hear what happened. Okay, so somebody had sent me the video earlier today, and what happens is uh, Walter Wallace uh, Jr. is approached by two cops that have guns drawn on him. Uh, Walter had something in his hand. It was reported later that he had a knife. And as he's weaving in and out of cars, the cops then open fire, uh, unloading their entire guns is what it sounded like, murdering uh, Walter Wallace Jr. in the middle of a neighborhood. And the one thing that you'll notice is there are many other black people around Walter Wallace. And it's obvious to, it's, it's important to note that Walter is black. Uh, and he's murdered in front of multiple other black people. What does this all mean? It means that police in the US have killed yet again another black man. And as much as we say this is going to stop, or this is the last person, or enough is enough, it keeps going on. There is obviously a cultural incompetency and a very insidious, deep-seated problem with police in America. The other problem is the reporting on the issue. If you look at a lot of headlines that are reporting on Walter Wallace Jr.'s death, his killing, his murder, a lot of them are honing in on the protests that occurred therein after. They're honing in on the damage that was done to the buildings after the police killed Walter Wallace Jr. And it's no stranger to here in Minneapolis where the Star Tribune has got in on the victim blaming or criminalizing of protesters that are responding to a traumatic episode occurring in their community. The Star Tribune wrote, 30 officers were injured, most of them from being struck by projectiles such as bricks and rocks, according to preliminary information from police. One officer was hospitalized in stable condition with a broken leg and other injuries after she was struck by a pickup truck, police said, while the other injured officers were treated and released. Okay, what the f***? All right, they had just killed a black man in cold blood. Had you not seen the video? It's horrible. So why report on police getting injured when a black man was just killed by that group? Can you not just report on the trauma that's occurring in the community, the catharsis that's needed, the healing that's needed, the pain that's been inflicted? This is the exact reporting that we're fighting against and that we're working against here at Onsite and everybody should be highlighting when major media publications highlight what has been the response to a state-sanctioned genocide in the community and they highlight that the police officers were hurt or the, da the, the buildings were damaged. This is to take your eye and your attention away from what actually happened and that's the fact that Walter Wallace Jr. was murdered by the Philly Philadelphia Police Department. That's what happened. And once they start expanding out and take degrees from the actual happening, it takes your eyes and attention off of what? Police brutality. So. Keep your eye on the ball, stay focused, stay in the fight, stay with us, okay? Star Tribune, if it's a cold day, you can probably use it as a log of fire. All right, it's also important to note that Walter Wallace Sr. said his son was a father, he was on medication and struggled with mental health issues. This is also important to note because when we have wellness checks or people with mental health issues that are checked on by the police, they usually end up dying, getting killed by the police. And so this is an issue that Twin Cities Coalition for Justice for Jamar um, highlights and, and many other groups highlight in saying that cops should not be called in for wellness checks or mental health checks and that they don't necessarily know what the hell to do when they show up, case in point, in Walter Wallace Jr. Also in the case of Walter Wallace Jr., the police commissioner of Philadelphia, Danielle Outlaw, that's her name, can't make that up, Daniel Outlaw said, quote, I heard and felt the anger of the community, end quote. She continued on to say that the murder, quote, raises many questions, end quote, and that, quote, those questions will be fully addressed by the investigation. 
And if you're wondering who's going to investigate the murder of Walter Wallace Jr., well, you guessed it. It's the people that murdered Walter Wallace Jr. The Philadelphia Police Department will be conducting their own investigation on their own murderers. <clears throat> this could be a practice that could maybe be useful for Minneapolis public schools. If they let black kids investigate their own suspensions, they might have a lower suspension rate. Okay, in other news, Amy Coney Barrett was confirmed to the Supreme Court taking Ruth Bader Ginsburg's seat. Not a single Democrat attended. Her record isn't long, so the whole process was pretty quick. In 2017, and it's important to note that this was three fucking years ago, Coney Barrett had never been a judge until Trump nominated her to the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. Until then, she had never worked in the government as a prosecutor, a defense lawyer, solicitor general, or served as counsel to a legislative body. The Senate Judiciary Committee was left a little bit dumbfounded when Coney Barrett couldn't remember three cases that she had worked on throughout her private practice career. This is also the first time since 1869 someone has been confirmed through the Senate and not had a singular vote from the major minority party. Amy Coney Barrett got confirmed quicker than the Twins playoff season, dog. That's fast. Speaking of white people failing upward, in a rare case in white America, a white man has failed downwards. Yes, you heard it, NPR's parent company CEO steps down. American Public Media Group's John McTaggart steps down amidst claims that the media company has fostered a harmful working environment for women and journalists of color. You don't say. You really don't say. John, you can be fine, man. You can probably get a job with Star Tribune. Did somebody say mutiny? Nobody at NPR did, but they did start a nice little website called transformnpr.org. So a lot of people want to keep their jobs. However, they are starting to create a culture of competency or at least demand it from their higher ups. Go to transformnpr.org and it harkens back to some of the stories that we were speaking about with uh, Garrett McQueen, Marianne Combs, and all of the sexism and racism that's going on in that building and people wanting better for themselves. Meanwhile, NPR's public media neighbor, Twin Cities Public Television, said racism and never heard of her. Three months ago, USA Today reported that MPS approves virtual return to school beginning next month, with children and teachers returning to classrooms as it becomes safe. What does this mean? Well, it means that three months later, they still don't have a plan. We interviewed Michael Duenas, uh, a person who's running for the Board of Education at-large seat, and he said that nobody from the Minneapolis Public School Board has consulted the Public uh, Health Board at all for what a return to school could mean regarding COVID, a global pandemic, and the safety for teachers and students. Yesterday, well, I should say Monday, outside of Justice Page Middle School, the Minneapolis Federation of Teachers held a rally in protest uh, for the safety of their students, schools, and staff members. And we kind of want to know what y'all think about that uh, in the comments below. What do you feel the action should be going forward for Minneapolis public schools? Some schools in the suburbs have started hybrid learning where they do two days on, three days off. With Minneapolis public schools, it's been all social, uh, all distance learning. But what is it that you prefer? And although you know, a lot of parents are getting up in arms and it, you know, tension is building with this and whatnot, what do you prefer to happen in your district regarding education for your kids or students in the community? All right, speaking of Minneapolis public schools fallout, Folks are still asking the question, what is going to happen with the CDD? If you don't know what the CDD is, it is a comprehensive district redesign that Minneapolis Public Schools has offered up as basically a bandage for something that needs, well, a lot more than a bandage. The comprehensive district design, according to Minneapolis Public Schools website, says that it examines and makes recommendations on how MPS educates students, how the school system works to meet the needs of underserved populations, and how we ensure resources are available to meet our goals. Well, essentially what the CDD is going to do is it's going to relocate thousands of students from their neighborhood school to potentially other schools. It's going to break up K through eight schools into K through five schools and then have the others for six, seven, and eight for other schools. Anderson Middle School is going to balloon up to the population of a community college and essentially a lot of families that have moved to specific neighborhoods to have their kids go to a K through eight school are going to have to start thinking about where to move next if they want their kid to stay in that district 
for the six through eight as it's broken up for uh, in K through five. The CDD has caused a lot of commotion in the community and as uh, community leader Nakeem Olivia Armstrong put, a lot of the decisions were made for us without us. And in that regard, the CDD most definitely did not consult anybody on the north side of Minneapolis as it will be impacting the north side of Minneapolis greatly. Again, with Minneapolis Public Schools in the CD, regarding the CDD, please tell us in the comments below what you think should be happening with the CDD. Are you for it? Are you against it? And what do you think the future of it is in that they signed off on it so quickly during a pandemic? Speaking of the Minneapolis public school to prison pipeline, it's been reported that 50% of the inmates in Stillwater prison have COVID, which is still less than the staff at the White House. In good news, well, we found water on the moon and there's just no telling when the U.S. will try to empirically colonize that. Also, more people have voted in this presidential election already than in the last presidential election. This is great news, and if you're one of those people that haven't voted, you should probably get out in there and vote. And if you're one of those people that say voting is the ultimate way of civically engaging with your community, well, how do you think black people got the vote? All right, coming up in this weekend's events, Francisco, can, can you tell us quickly what is happening this weekend? Okay, this is a packed weekend right before the election. Saturday, the 31st, Halloween. We're marching down Lake Street for a dump Trump protest organized by Mirac, and that is occurring at noon and should wrap up around 2 p.m. And then on sat on and then on Sunday we are hosting we are starting our Dia de los Muertos event which will begin at Indigenous Roots Cultural Center on the east side come over to the south side of Minneapolis to George Floyd Square pick it up the following day starting on the north side of Minneapolis at Root Cellar and then bringing it back to St. Paul, finishing it up on the west side at El Burrito Mercado. What does MIRAC stand for? MIRAC is an acronym that stands for Minnesota Immigrants Rights Action Committee. Boom. That's it. That'll do it for us today, Wednesday, October 28th. Thank you so much for tuning in and for all the support and, and everybody just, you know, the, the, the nice comments and things and even the not so nice comments. We'll take those too. Any attention is good attention, right? Yeah. Uh, some folks have asked us how can they make a monthly occurring donation? Well, there's a link right below where you can donate to on-site public media and keep our wheels running and, and everything turning and people getting paid. We are a majority BIPOC public media group and we want to continue to keep it that way and also keep this, this show going and keep uh, all of our folks showing up at different rallies and being able to interview different elected officials and really growing to the, to the point that we can maybe even rent our or buy our own space. Oh goodness, what would that be like? Uh, and not filming in my kitchen. Uh, we are in my kitchen, that's, that's where we film this. So with all that being said, please go ahead to the link below and donate. We have two mini documentaries coming up. One uh, for uh, Mirac, which uh, put on a rally for Stop Sterilizing Immigrant Women, and then another uh, uh, mini documentary, which is kind of a forum that was taken outside of Woodbury High School when the community uh, called us to go and film that as well. Oh, and lastly, do not forget, as this video is just popping up, we have the 24 demands of George Floyd Square that is going to start popping up every day. We're gonna put up four demands that we filmed with the community members there. Um, each day until the 24 is all filled out. And that's just really what we're, we're about here is getting uh, boots on the ground and getting uh, cameras to the people in their community where they wanna deliver messages that aren't really heard by places like um, Star Tribune. All right, that'll do it for us. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one.